morning everyone it is uh, May 13th 2021 and uh, it's 9.20 I am due to be at Blues at 9.30 and we're going to up, not maybe picking up, but definitely uh, doing some work on the uh, 389. I don't know, I guess he's had it a month, uh, and that's fine. He can have it for two months. Uh, so, the magnolia tree, good golly. don't see him like that much. You see him like that every now and then. If you ever see a big magnolia tree like that and you're allowed to do it, it's in bloom. Go up and smell that bloom. Boy, that is some kind of good smell. Uh, done that many times in my life. So, here we go. And uh, I understand that Blue Shop has faced a kind of a radical change. He is uh, he's making some changes. So, we'll see what those are in just a few minutes. So, it's a pretty drive anyway. I told you where Blue's place is. It's on Bradshaw Road in Mooresville, North Carolina. But uh, I don't think it's going to be there anymore. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do. If I get more information on that, maybe I'll get a business card today. But like I say, there are changes. So Daphne's doing good. That must be strawberries over there. They always seem to cover strawberries up. That looks like quite the professional operation there. And we, ooh, there's some big power pylons. There's also a place around here called Lazy Five. And they're sort of a gigantic uh, petting zoo and uh, farm goods and pumpkins in the fall and, and things like that. So there's like greenhouse over there. Maybe that'll not mess up my camera too bad. There's big electrical waves of power coursing through the air. All right, let's pull up to Blue's place, the shop. kind of thick and lush in here this time of year and get ready to go down the hill okay well I think they aren't gonna shoot me I think no old daff here if nothing else there's the shot Blue's old truck there. Some horses out there. Oop, nobody's in the arena today. All right, well, let's, uh... They don't want me going that way, I guess. I don't know. He's expecting me. I think I'll park on this side of the trailer. All right. Okay, here's... Here's Blue's project if he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to do it or not. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do this, and you don't have to do it. Oh, how do you like your pen light? Isn't that a good one? Whoa. Okay, good. 
This is going to be uh, the Bonneville commemorative clock. I made that out of, and I'm rolling tape here, so don't cuss like my friend Sean does all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have the, I, I, I'm working on that motor grader. He just, I have to edit and edit and edit. But I made this clock, and I'm, I'm going to finish it. I've, I've got the arms and everything. But this is, that's the same color, you know, as, as uh, the Pontiac, pretty close to it. And that's powder coated. So I got you, I got you a brand new Sharpie. <laughs> and it, since this is going to be the last motor here, Which and is. this is going to be the last motor that Blue does here, I was wondering if you would sign that for me. And it, well, you tell me where you want me to sign it, <laughs> and I'll sign it. It would mean a whole lot to, to me and everybody else. All right. So just just wherever, you know, this is going to be the 12 o'clock right here. So you, I'm going to leave your artistic talents. If that's 12 o'clock. That'll be 12 o'clock. If I sign it up here. That'd be beautiful. I take it that that's kind of what you're looking that's for. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, sir. Okay. Oops. It ought to come out better than that. There you go. Thank you very much. How's that? That's beautiful. Now, that's that your works. pen. That's, a, that's supposed to be a brand new one. I, I made sure I got a new one. So. It, just, it just didn't like me to begin with. <laughs> well, this is kind of slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take this apart, and I'm going to seal this in clear, in clear okay. coat, and so it won't, it won't ever come off. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. So I really appreciate that. No problem. Okay, and you keep that because all, all machinists need a good marker. So let's put this in here. Put it right there, and we'll seal it when we get home. Okay. Well, for the record, tell me you got the you got the you say the cam moves good, yep. and oh, there's our seals. Yep. And here are the instructions. Okay. And per the instruction, there's two places that are in the block that. There and Needs there. To be filled. Look how beautiful it is. And you had to soak it for what? Six weeks to get it clean? <laughs> the dirtiest block he's ever seen. <laughs> oh, tell me about getting that uh, plug out of there that was stripped. You did you how did you, did you drill and tap drilled it? it out. Just drilled it out and, and then you drilled were able to easy out it. Drilled an easy out into it. Okay, good, okay. I have some left-handed drill bits, but that's about 1 in 20 that that works. I have some. I wish I could tell you where they are. <laughs> They're not that useful. And right now, with, with everything that, that has been done for the hey. new owner, uh, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, when I was by myself as a one-man deal in here, I knew where everything was. Yeah. Right now... You kind of losing track of it. Oh, I've lost track of it. Well, I've got a, I've got some ultra gray in the truck okay. that, that you don't even have to open that well, if you don't want to. Let me go get it. Let me go get my ultra gray, and I'll let's see if let's see if you like this stuff. I brought it in anticipation of this. <laughs> he said that this was up to me, so let's go out here. I brought this. Just hoping, boy, there might, I bet there's ticks out here. So far this year, I have found two ticks on me. I've been spraying my shoes and everything. Where is it? There it is. Uh, oh, see, I told you, I might save him $10 there. This is, the, this is the stuff Mick told me to get. This is the right stuff. Now... I'm not going to be able to film all of this, but, but I think we I think we, there's enough videos. I kind of wanted to just get. Let's see if you. I used this yesterday. Do you like that stuff? That'll do fine. I don't want you to waste the whole tube. Open the tube for no reason. Okay. See, I didn't un I didn't understand that when I read this the first time. So all these holes do, these two here and the two in, in the cap just hold the rope seal in place. 
What? You, you got to give somebody credit for coming up with that rope seal thing. I mean, for Go. saving money and being dumb. <laughs> it, it works, right? Okay, so let's stop. Uh, that's all those holes did. Okay, so he's got the main bearings in there. That looks like the red ultra lube that... Let me see what you got there. Torco. Torco. That looks exactly... Now you got to make sure on your thrust surfaces that you've got... The thrust surface is just as important as the main bearing surface. Okay. You want to make sure that all that's lubricated on both sides. Yeah. Okay. There you go, sir. And uh, so, already lubricated the cam. So that was a pretty good kit for uh, freeze plugs or core plugs or. Oh. Yeah, it, it was so good. As a matter of fact, here are the extra plugs that they sent you that you wasn't needed in the block. Okay. <laughs> the, the, okay. Were those the ones for the heads? Uh, or you did the heads? No, no, They're the, just those big, big block plugs. Oh, okay. They fit two spare ones. I'm all right. Lie. All right. Well, I'll use them for something. Well, you got it. You got it. I'm, there was something else that I, I saw after the fact, and it's on my table somewhere. But you found some brass. Yeah, I brought you those early on. Yeah, I brought you some uh, brass. And, and they're on my table. I had already put in the screw-in plugs. That's fine. That I, uh, you know, I keep keep that kind of stuff. That's okay. Yeah, you you can keep those. Don't worry about looking for them. And these are the heads. Yep. And uh, I wonder where that brush came from that was in the top of the heads. I think it came from me driving it up to the farm that day and water just getting in it. Okay. That and uh, I got most of that stuff out, but like you said, this thing stayed in the tank for a long time. <laughs> yeah, a long, time. a long time. Oh, where's the intake manifold? I guess it's still back there. Okay, yeah, I don't want to forget that because I got to do some work. I'm going to try to powder coat that. Yeah. And uh, so okay. But, uh, so one of these was twisted, and one of them was pretty good, right? That's true, but I had to surface the one that, that was uh, out of surface badly, and I think I ended up with like six thousandths okay. that I needed, and I had to match the other head by taking six thousandths off it. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. have that. Uh, miss, Even miss... that doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah, so. well, it is. Okay, well, let me, I got to concentrate here and... Like I say, m enough people do this. Now, our instructions say to fill these holes with silicone. And usually, I mean, well, in this case, and I'm sure he'll agree with me, it goes in this way. And this does not call for any protrusion like three-eighths of an inch up like the 305 does. So this is uh, the old 389. Now, I saw some dude that his, his uh, hydraulic lifter failed and destroyed his motor. And uh, when he got it back together, he didn't, his method of breaking it in was to drive it. I thought that was kind of strange. I mean, everybody else says, you know, break it in at various RPMs for 20 minutes right where you are. I guess these are my, my pistons, baby. I probably won't be taking this home today. But uh, we, we're going to go ahead and post it, whatever we do today. Okay, let's put these seals in. I want to say something about this diagram here. Uh, and I'm trying to keep the paper away from the main bearings. You told even... me that you're not going to use this, this concentric. Is that no, sir, I'm not going to use that. Okay, well, it's got multiple dings and stuff in it. so. Well, finding that broken end of it down in the pan, I wasn't real happy. Mm -hmm. But I've already put on an Edelbrock electric fuel pump. Okay. So, so yeah. And since my car's sit for a while... This has got to go in. It's got to be there for the spacing. Yeah, okay, okay. But it, it'll be in there. You're just not going to use I'm it. I'm not going to use it. I've already plugged that thing off on the cover. Very good. Yeah. I, old cars, I 
require electric pumps so they'll start quicker. Sit there and grind the starter out of them. Now what they're talking about on this diagram is looking at the lower part of the, of, let's just do it like that. So if, if you look at the top part of your seal, you'll see that it don't look right. But now it matches, and it actually says on here, flywheel side. So, well, we can't use these because it doesn't say flex plate side. I don't have a flywheel. <laughs> that was a joke, Blue. <laughs> not a good one. <laughs> It didn't hurt my feelings at all. It, it makes me feel very at home like everybody else. And they're doing the right thing. I'm cleaning parts. Okay, he's cleaning parts. <laughs> so anyway, it does say, uh, it should say back, but I guess flywheel's good enough. Okay, there's the crankshaft. All right, and it's on the polishing stand, as you and say. You can, you can see that it's been oh, polished. Yes, sir, I can. It looks very pretty. Use a, a very fine belt on the polisher, and, and it looks like a Stradivarius violin thing. Look at that! Yeah, baby. And uh, God, what is that? Thousand? No, that's a little bit rougher than that, isn't it? I think it's four hundred. It's on the back side of the belt. All the numbers are always on. The oh back yeah, side yeah. Okay, four hundred. Okay. okay. Uh, Got to spank there a little bit. <laughs> Had All it coming. Right. Uh, uh, I think you're ready. We're ready? Okay, yep. so uh, let's... Now what it says do is fill these holes and put a little bit on the side that goes toward the front of the motor. Is that the way you remember it? You don't want to, you don't want to talk about it, do you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't saying. I don't blame what instructional. So... The, I just want to make sure that we don't skip any steps. Yes, sir, and take our time. So I got this seal in there, and you got to press down on it, and it does protrude a little bit, and you'll see when you press down on it that you'll get uh, the silicone will, will uh, exude up from the hole, so be sure and wipe that clear. So I think we're about good to go. Now, Blue, it says we're supposed to sand this off or something. But I don't know if that's true or not. It said something about... Something about a belt sander I read earlier. But I don't think that's necessary. It doesn't seem to be protruding enough to, to matter. I think if... Yeah, and I've got the red lube on it. Just a little bit of a finger full there. Okay, well, I think we're okay. So we got that in, and here's the rear cap. And so let me get that sealed up, and then we'll go from there, okay? Just about ready to lift the, the crank into it. There you go. That's Torco. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's yeah, a, like... Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture. Yes, sir. This is going to be on the... This is going to be what I'm going to open with. First business. So, I... The, uh, <laughs> the only... Uh, there's a reference to a box brownie in the movie Ice Station Zebra with Rock Hudson and Patrick McGowan. Because you might remember they have that satellite that got astray and, had, and took pictures all over. This was in the 60s. And uh, Rock Hudson says, well, you, what you had there was a hell of a box brownie. And I remember finding those cameras, and you look down at them. And I, have, I still have a camera where you can look down at it. And, and that's what a box brownie did. Yeah. You, you didn't hold it up to your face. The viewfinder was that way. 
Yeah, you had to, you had to go down and then you, you centered it that way. I found a couple. It took me a while to figure out how that worked. But it had a little it had a little character, a little boy, like a brownie or something, like Brownie the camera boy or something. But I'm right, you're gonna have to put that down because it's your okay, job to pick this Okay, we're gonna do this thing. I can't film that. Okay, that's Okay, we grabbed it off the polishing stand and we got her set down in here and she's uh she's spinning beautifully. And you can see where when you move the crank you move the seal, so we're not going to move the crank much anymore. <laughs> okay, just move just a little tiny bit, not nothing to speak of. Okay. So we've. Uh, well, that's the first cap that we'll put on. Okay, well, that's let me. A good idea, just like we said a while ago, just to put a put, kiss. Put a, a, a kiss, a skosh <laughs> of yellow or yellow glue. I was thinking the uh, 8001, but ultra gray. It's amazing how different GM blocks can be of the same era to me. So it's got the little lineup tabs. It just slipped right on. I double checked my. Now these are torqued higher than those. Is that right? That's correct. These are bigger bolts. Yeah. That. Okay. Okay. So you're looking at your locating tabs. Your locating tabs go together. Yeah, I noticed that on the... Now, that's not always true on British cars, but on these it is true. I noticed that on the 305. Most of the Americans. Do you do you remember that about British cars that they... The tabs I, were... I really do, you know. Don't I don't remember. Yeah, I, uh, I was surprised, but I thought that it was wrong. I did find that two of my... This cap and this cap on the 305 were on backwards. The arrows were pointing the wrong way. Mm. And, uh... On the 305? Yeah. So, yeah, I corrected that. Now, I'll tell you this. Let's see if you've had this experience. When I went through the 305, Daphne's motor, the bearings were bad. I did the rear, rear seal, did the bearings. I corrected those two caps that were pointing the wrong way. And my oil pressure is phenomenal, and it's a whole heck of a lot smoother. It just runs a lot smoother. It, I mean... I mean, I think the crankshaft was shaking around in there. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, it just seems to be so much smoother. As Mick says, Mick has a friend who took his first drink of scotch, and his response was, Smooth! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's been kind of a, kind of a running gag, but... Uh, Whenever we say smooth, we usually accompany it with that little raspy <laughs> voice. So, beautiful. It's nice that they the old engines, they put the cap number in the cap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, two, three, four, yeah. I mean, you know what that one is, and you know what this one is if it don't have a two, three, or four on it. So, I mean, they, they do. Well, actually, there's, there's a one there on it. There's a one in there that's just... Oh, I see it. It is barely there. Yep. Okay. And you're standing on what would be the... Uh, the right side of the block when it's, when it's in the car, yeah. I've had several right-hand drive cars in my life. Not a problem for me, but that's a problem for a lot of people. Would be for me. It's hard to pass. <laughs> On a two-lane. <laughs> But if you're delivering mail, it's really nice. Yeah. I was said on a video the other day about how that's where I learned. Now, my BMW doesn't have a dipstick other than me, as I like to say. So you've got to learn to trust those sensors in the block for oil. That's scary. And uh, 
I had a right-hand drive Mercedes S-Class I got in England. And one day the oil light came on, and I said, well, that's it. And that's not it. It really meant that it was a quart low. I mean, it, and so I put a quart in, it's fine. So in America, when you, the oil light comes on, it's, oh, it's toast. Yeah. It, that's it. That's all there is to it. And uh, that just means, you know, stop the motor and call the tow truck and take it to the engine rebuilder. <laughs> that's what that light means. But on German cars, it means you're really a quart low. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. So interesting. All right. We'll flip her over here soon. Gosh, I don't even know what time it is. I got here. Oh. Book time. Book time. Okay. Once upon a time. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna put this down. This is gonna be this is gonna be a long one. So we torqued her down. Uh you have to look up your own specs, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh but that is that boy, that is a thing of beauty there. This is the difference between my house and blue shop right here. Is the you, I wish I could describe the beauty <laughs> that is going through my fingertips right now. It's like when I used to that time I played the piano pretty well. That that afternoon. Beautiful. And no gray came shooting out of there. So now these holes here on what I do on these caps, usually that's to pull the bearings out. Some people use a, a, a slide hammer. I guess you don't I don't know. Do you know what those those bolts are for? Those holes? I mean that, that most not all. Does that engine have a, a, a flash shield? Uh, yeah, it has a windage tray, a little one. Windage trash. Oh, is that where that? Yeah, it might be where that go. I have to go back and look on my old film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's what that is. But I've seen them on a lot of British cars. You, you they have a, a place you can screw in and use a slide hammer and pull them out. Now this will this will be interesting. Okay. Okay, so uh, everybody's taking a little break here. Uh, now remember, you're the final person. If this is your motor and you take it home and you're building it, you're responsible for all the stuff being clean, okay? This is Permatex number two. That's what he says he likes to use. That'll clean off with denatured alcohol and we'll... Uh, We'll uh, paint it at that time or it'll rust. Now, here is his book. Gosh, where, did, where is this thing? 1969. Okay. And he says, these are different from most other motors. And it shows you the identification bosses. Oh, I might be in some kind of copyright violation, but I don't, I don't care. So, uh... Oil spurt hole toward camshaft, and this is the right bank two four six eight and one three five seven for the left bank, and it has identification bosses on the connecting rods with the notch on the piston. Large ball side toward F side of piston. So there you go. So that's the way they're going in. I can't wait to see what kind of ring compressor he uses. I use the kind that cuts your fingers to bits, the blue steel kind, uh, so I don't know what he uses. I used to have the kind that pinched in together through the handle. Uh, meh, it works sometimes. Use that on Volkswagens. So there's the, that thing for spacing. I don't know how good electric fuel pumps were back in the 60s. Uh, but they're better now. Okay, so that's the way that works. I just want to look at that real careful. And if that helps somebody, good. Okay. And, uh, 30 second edition. Look at this baby here. Whew. Look 
at all. This is great. And he picked this book up and just went right to this page. He knew right where to go. Hmm. Okay, well, it's coming together. I don't know what he's going to do with all that stuff. This is the other part. There's his Corvette. Our top forts over there. I think I mentioned that before. My sister's first boyfriend, Janet, her first boyfriend's name was Ray. And at the age of 16, Ray's sister, Anita, was given one of these. And I remember seeing her in Mount Holly. You might can look this up. Uh, it, it was the Bright Star Drive-In. And when I was a little boy, I used to have to hang out there with all the with all the teenagers. I didn't really enjoy that very much, all smoking and stuff like that. But I remember Anita's Corvette was white. And the thing I remember, all the boys snuck up behind her car and put gobs of ketchup packets behind her wheel, her rear wheels. I mean, just like handfuls of them. So when she backed up, uh, after she was done with doing whatever she did there... It, it it threw ketchup all over the back of her car. Looked like she'd run over run over people, but uh he's got some real equipment in here. You can't my little light's not gonna help much. Okay, here he comes. Yeah, I've seen guys do that with Corvairs. Tommy Goodman. Guy I could I I didn't know him but I knew of him. He was the shop manager at the John Deere dealer. Oh, okay. Yeah, he uh, he was into them Corvairs. I, I, he drove around in one. I, he knew my friend Mark Taylor, and I think Sean knows him. But I I don't think I've ever met the man. And I've, guy. Yeah, I've, I just... Pure uh, country. Yeah. I've been by his house and seen all the Corvairs out there. I'm not a horizontally opposed type of guy, though, you know? <laughs> I had a 53 Volkswagen growing up. I got for $40. And it was worth every penny. <laughs> I got a couple of I got a couple of years out of it. Somebody had painted it with aircraft paint. It was petty blue. Oh my and the paint on it was like, oh what, a quarter inch thick? <laughs> so I never really knew what it was like. I got it running pretty good. The distributor gear was stripped out of it. Took it to the Carolina Machine Shop and got a new gear pressed on it. Remember them out in Charlotte? Carolina's Auto Machine? Yeah, something like that. They're yeah. still there. They're still there? They're still there. I'll be danged. That, that was Junior a, Moore. Junior Moore. That, that name's his, familiar. His son's buddy. Now loves that dude. Okay. Yeah, you knew you were you were in a good spot there. They they knew Volkswagens anyway. I guess they know everything. That's where the gunk and hot gunk line came from. Well, there's my first view of the the board cylinders. Now, what you use? It smells like WD forty. Just use it to clean. Okay, you're, you're okay. Solid. Oh yeah, uh, them things. So I got a fancy water pump for it, and I got the I got the plates. I got the plates right. When I got it, the, it only had one plate in the uh, cover, and it was rotten. And so I assumed it was just one plate, but you got to have both plates. So when I got, I got the plate kit. It was fifty bucks for the two plates, but you got to have them. But I got a super cool something CNC rotor vane water pump that's supposed to help with the uh, the flow of fluid through it, the coolant. So we'll hope that's true. 
but it fits real nice. So that's the cam plate you put on, right? Okay. And that mine was okay, huh? It's, it better be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you said that the day we pulled the cam out of it, you thought it was okay. So it's obvious when those are, you know, all cars I deal with have those. And I got on my friend Brent's TR4, I pulled it off and it was worn pretty badly. And I got a new one and it was worse than the old one. I got, I got like three or four more thousandths from the new plate than I got from the old plate. So you can't, you know, just because it's new don't mean it works. That's one of the greatest phrases I ever learned as a boy was that very phrase right there. All right. Now. I know I saw the multiple things and I know. I don't know. Okay. okay. Let's turn this what off. I need to know is, 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 is zero, zero. I think that's advance and retard, and I think that's zero. Yeah, that's plus four and minus four degrees, okay. and then zero, and I don't know what that. That, that's an SA, but that's what I need to know right there. Yeah, that, yeah. that's. Okay, three key choices for maximum performance. Zero is factory standard. Yep. Some original equipment valve. Okay, well, I don't need to know that. The keyway mark zero, align it tooth rim with cam sprocket timing mark on camshaft center line. That was a crazy uh, chain on this thing that that was on it. That was just, it just, it, it was, it wasn't a chain. Okay, we won't speak of that any further. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's one one piston in there, the thirty thousandths over ten hundred thousandths. Okay. So things are things are looking up. Where do you get them big plastic bags from? That you put the motor blocks in. I've always wondered that. <laughs> you just have them? Just, just trash bags. Just trash bags. Oh, okay, okay. They, they're kind of a, a good meal. They're so thick. Just, just. It reminds me of the shower curtains when you go on in a hotel. They're so thick. You're, the ones you get, just the ones you get at Target, they just, uh, they're made out of like zero mil paper thin. All right, so there you go. There's one in, and the splash, the the oiler for the cam is in the right direction, and all. Boy, there's you can mess up bad here, can't you? If you don't know what you're doing. I guess a lot of people do, and they keep going. So you would agree that this motor had never been into, right? Never. Since 1964, this motor was never touched. Yeah, I know it's getting a little, little... I don't have anything on to keep me warm, but it is getting a little warm in here. Look at that. Oh, that's the, that's the cats right there. Spinning... Look at that. What a like scamp. That. <laughs> you like that? Yes, sir. We're, usually I just get big vice grips or a pipe wrench and put them... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I used to put the nut in it and spin it around with it. <laughs> I tell you about Mick using the new German drill bit on his on the uh, getting the uh, front seal out of his crank on his Lexus. Use that nerd, and he nicked his crankshaft. 
we fought that battle for a long time, getting a speedy sleeve and everything. And uh, whew. yeah, you got to be you got to be real careful with that particular area right there. I wouldn't even want a pipe wrench in the building. <laughs> Get. <laughs> That is an interesting device to guide that rod through there without having it touch the the cylinder walls. That's beautiful. I've never seen that tool before. Crankshafts have you seen with the stripe of the rod bolt yeah. on the crankshaft? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. And this is some kind of alloy, aluminium or something. Yeah, it's, it's just aluminum. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is the second one. We're not going to do every one of these. Yeah, he ain't got the finger, cut your finger to ribbons. <laughs> Ring compressor. Well, Blue has made a terrible mistake. He left his phone on. <laughs> so, uh, so he's got to go drag the ring. <laughs> They don't know what that means. Yeah, they, oh, they don't know what that means. Well, it's... Uh, I go to the surface. Yeah, yeah level surface, the, uh, the riding arena. So they, they drag it with... You got them big iron teethy things on the, on the net? Yep. Yeah, that's... Yeah, okay. That's rake. A rake. Dragging, dragging the ring. So Lee... Lee oh, I won't... Uh, Lee Ann called. I guess I can say her name. You know. Yeah. And uh, I guess she advertises for riding stuff. And... Uh, Honey, would you come drag the ring? Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Bobby's here. We were building this motor, but never mind. Just get covered up. <laughs> and don't forget to turn your phone off. <laughs> I'm going to do this through his window. I don't want him to see me doing this. But in case you want to see what dragging the ring is, that's dragging the ring. He's got that unit back there with tines on it. So, must be going to be having a, a class here soon. Wish I had that bucket. Looks like it's kind of beat up, but I sure would like to have it. Okay, he'll be around this way in a second. So let me give you the score. It's uh, Leanne one, Blue and Bobby zero. <laughs> Man, you gotta put on your best, your best foot forward here to when the kitties come up for their horse riding lessons. Be sure and keep your heels down. Where is he? There he comes. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll see no more of it, I suppose. Well. See what it looks like before and after? I don't know if I said this. If I did, I'll just delete it. We've got this eccentric cam back on here. It actually took a little grinding because it's this didn't accept this, but I ain't using that anyway. So anyway, we're we're getting there. He's probably gonna kick me out of here in a minute. It's lunchtime. Put an amen on this, and uh, so this is this is my box of. Yeah, you wanna put that in the car? Uh, the old box or the new box? No, the new box. All of it. All of it. All of it goes. Rocker arms and lifters and, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. We'll move that to the car. So, uh. Everything you've already paid for. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there's, we're just going to, every like you said, everything else here is repetition. So, no sense going into it. I will tell you that when I put that 
silicone down there. You gave me a thumbs up, didn't you? Yep. Would you do it again so I can get it on tape? Like there that. You go. <laughs> now, now say like and subscribe. No. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we're going to do today. It's lunchtime, and uh, I'm going to just leave him alone and get out of his hair. And because, like he said, you got to get your mind into it, and then you know you got you got to get got to get in the groove. It's good to get some fresh air. Okay. Well, let's get this stuff in the in the boot that we're in the in the bed of the truck. That was an experience that I looked forward to for a long time. I actually got to do some machine work, although I'm just standing at a grinder. I still got to do some machine work with a master machinist, and that was fun. And uh, I can't, I can't express um, my gratitude to Blue and. I was going to get this motor done a long time ago, but I just didn't. And to think that I'm the last one in that shop is just uh, unbelievably uh, touching and an honor for me. It's a pretty sky, isn't it? Okay. Thanks for spending time with me and Blue. Me and you and a machinist named Blue. <laughs> <laughs>